Hello everyone, this is Robert, and these are the calipers that I have in my workshop. I decided I have a lot of digital calipers, so it'd be nice to do a little bit of a comparison between the two. Um, what I'm going to be doing is giving them a couple different tests, measuring the smoothness of them, the accuracy, and also the current draw, and a couple other things, and just kind of ranking them based on those various factors. Please use the chapters to skip around, and you can jump, jump straight to the conclusion if you want and see which ones are quote-unquote the best. Uh, let's get started, and I'll introduce each brand. So I'm just going to quickly run through each one of these just so we know what we're looking at and then we'll move on to the tests. This first one at the bottom is a Tormach branded. I got these um, with my Tormach 440 and they're just your kind of um, average clone. Um, you can see that they look almost identical to these Nikos and really similar to these um, older Harbor Freights down there. Um, next up, we have these from QFun. Um, you can get these on Amazon. This is kind of a new style that just came out, and full disclosure, um, they actually sent me these, and this is kind of the impetus for doing the video. I wanted to compare these against all the others, since this is kind of a new style that just came out and has a really nice large screen on it. So QFun brand. Um, next, we have the classic um, Mitutoyo Digimatics. Um, these are kind of their most popular ones. These are about $130. I should probably mention prices. Um, Tormach brand's about $30. Bucks. These are about $25. Bucks. And yeah, $130. So by far the most expensive ones out here. And that is what they look like. Um, then we also have this Pittsburgh brand. For those of you not familiar, Pittsburgh is Harbor Freight's brand. So these are kind of the newer Harbor Freight version. Um, these ones in the back are kind of the older Harbor Freight version. So yeah, that's what those are. I think these are around 20, 25 bucks as well. Then we also have this Nico brand. I actually got these because they're kind of like a upgraded version of the traditional Chinese ones. These run about $30 on Amazon, and these are pretty common as well. And then lastly, we have um, the old classic Harbor Freight. And these are my oldest set of calipers I've had for a really long time. Um, Harbor Freight actually has many, many different sets on their website, and I still think they sell a version that looks just like this. So let's move on to the testing with accuracy. For the accuracy test, I'm going to be using a 1-2-3 block. This is um, pretty close. I'm verifying it with um, some digital micrometers here, and we can see that in the one inch dimension, we're off by just a tiny bit or dead on, depending on where you're going. And I verified the two inch and the three inch dimension with a digital height gauge, and I'm gonna take those three readings and measure them for each one of the calipers, and let's see what we get. So here is a little nice montage of all six calipers measuring the one inch, the two inch, and the three inch dimensions. And not surprisingly to me, they're all pretty much identical. They all come out within about a half a thousandth of what is perceived as the actual known value for the measurement, which is one, two, and three inch. Um, generally speaking, the one inch dimension for, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, for five out of the six, the one inch dimension comes out at um, half a thou over, and with the three inch dimension as well, most of them put it about a half a thou over, whereas with the two inch dimension, mention, it's kind of split. Some of them are right at two and the other half are right at um, half a thou over two inch. So they're all pretty much equally accurate. The stated accuracy for the calipers that actually state their accuracy is listed as plus or minus one thousandth of an inch, and they all have a resolution, except for the Mitutoyo, of about a half a thou. So everything is within tolerance, and it is accurate as far as I know what the true measurement of the one, two, three block is. So no real difference between any of these calipers. So here is a table for the final results for all the calipers. Now I did take multiple measurements with the one inch, the two inch, and the three inch, um, really just to remove any human error. They are digital calipers, so the way they function, they're not gonna give you different readings if you measure them exactly the same way. They're always gonna measure pretty much the same thing, but I did take multiple readings just to kind of try and take out any user error, you know, if I'm holding them wrong, or you know, if I have them on a different spot, things like that. So. I said I wasn't really that surprised in these results because just the way digital calipers function, 
I didn't really expect there to be much variability in their actual accuracy, but there's a lot of other factors that we have to look at. So let's move next on to the readability and just kind of see how easy these are to actually read the values off of them. So readability is a little bit subjective, but what I'm trying to look for is ultimately the size of the screen, the contrast of the screen, and also the refresh rate. And I've ranked them from one to six here with QFUN being on top and the old Harbor Freight being on bottom for it's just tiny, tiny little screen. And you can kind of see the details here. Um, the QFUN basically has this massive, massive screen. The refresh is pretty quick and it has overall good contrast. With the Mi2 Toyo, it has the best contrast out of any of them. It has a really white background, but it kind of has this shadow on the top, but it does have very good refresh. The Nico is overall pretty good. It's um, good contrast, good readability, decent size screen, and decent refresh. The Pittsburgh is okay. It suffers from relatively slow refresh and doesn't have as good a contrast as the others. The Tormach is kind of even worse with the refresh and the contrast. And the Harbor Freight just has a very slow refresh and a really, really tiny screen. But none of these were really bad. They all function fine. But the Mitu Toyo and the QFun definitely are the most readable by far. So the next test I'll be conducting is the smoothness. How much effort and how smooth is it when you extend and retract them? So what I'm going to be doing is doing two things. I'm going to be recording the audio for each one, but then I'm also going to be using a scale to measure the actual force that it takes to open and close the calipers. So let's first start with the audio. So don't worry, I'm not going to be making ASMR videos, but I've got my lav mic taped down to the table, and then I will just extend and um, close the calipers, and we'll see what each one sounds like. Um, first up is the Tormach. Overall, the Tormach is pretty rough, and there's some smoother and rougher points, like it's really rough right there. So that's what it sounds like overall. Pretty rough. Next up, we have the Q Fun. The Q Fun is very, very smooth, and we'll show that with the scale test later. But here's what it sounds like it's extremely smooth along the whole section of it, and there's really no rough spots whatsoever. Actually, pretty impressive. Next up, the Me Too Toyo. The Mitu Toyo isn't really rough per se. It's um, consistent along the whole length of it. It does have some noise, as you can obviously hear. I um, wouldn't say it's rough. There's just some consistent resistance, let's say. Next up, Pittsburgh. The Pittsburgh feels similar to the Mitu Toyo with maybe just a little bit more resistance and a little bit more roughness in general. Um, I get a little bit of roughness down here towards the end on that full extension. It's definitely a little bit rough down there and a lot smoother here, so maybe it just hasn't worn in enough. Next up, the Nico. The Nico feels pretty smooth, um, I'd say the full length of it. Um, this is kind of a good compromise between being smooth but also having a little bit of resistance to it. Yeah, overall pretty good and I'd say similar feeling to the Mi2 Toyo but definitely a lot quieter if that makes sense, um, but pretty much smooth throughout the whole range, no issues and a good amount of resistance. And lastly, the old Harbor Freight. These are the oldest pair that I have. Um, you can kind of see they're a little bit beat up and old. Um, these are relatively smooth just because I've had these for a really long time. But there's a rough point right there. Gets a little smoother over there. The only smoothness that you're feeling from these is just because I've used these for, I don't know, probably close to 10 years. But overall, they're pretty good. They have a decent level of resistance. They're not loud or scratchy, but they are a little bit inconsistent through the whole range. 
So for this next test, I'm going to be extending the calipers and then pressing them down on this scale and then seeing what the highest number reading on this is. I wish I had a max function on this, but I'm just gonna kind of be watching it and then recording that into the notebook. All of these calipers have kind of like this give adjustments right here. You got a little screw there and a little screw there and that kind of adjusts the tension against this bar. All of these have been adjusted and the um, lock has been fully retracted. So this will be the least amount of resistance that they will have. So let's start with the Tormach. Four hundred and thirty grams. Next, the Q-Fun. Okay, like one fifty. I think one fifty-eight was the highest I saw. So that's pretty crazy. Next up, we've got Mitu Toyo. So it just shoot up to 370. Next, Pittsburgh. About 480. Next up, the Nico. It's about 330. And lastly, the old Harbor Freights. Three seventy. So once again, I'm giving all of these a ranking from one to six. Um, Q Fun is way, way, way far out in first place with only 158 grams. I really wish I could translate this better to video, but it is exceptionally smooth. It's almost a little bit too smooth. It will kind of almost fall out on its own. You can kind of adjust the little screws and give it a little bit more um, resistance, but it is extremely, extremely smooth. Second place is the Nico. Um, it feels really good overall. It has very low resistance, um, but it doesn't feel scratchier and consistent. Then we have the Mitu Toyo. Granted, this one is a little bit newer than the others. I just got this pretty recently. It will most likely wear in a little bit more, um, but it definitely is pretty scratchy as you heard. And then next up, we have the old Harbor Freight, which Honestly, I think it is just there because it's really, really old and worn down. And then in the last places, we have the Tormach at five and the Pittsburgh at six. Both of these are pretty scratchy, pretty rough, and they're just overall not very fun to use. They just kind of feel very rough in general. So in this final test, we're gonna be measuring the current draw of each one of these calipers when it's on and when it's off. For some of the cheaper calipers, they don't really go into a proper standby current mode. They just lower it a tiny bit, so when the caliper is off, it's still really drawing a fair amount of power from the little button cell. And so they end up um, running out of battery pretty quickly. Uh, the nicer ones can last a lot longer on a single cell. So we've got the bench power supply set up here to provide a steady 1.5 volts at half an amp, which is way, way, way more than we're gonna need but that is gonna provide a steady power source that is going into the meter, and then we can simply just touch these probes, and boom, we can power up each one of the calipers, and then we can turn it off, and then I will record the on and the off current, so we can see which one has a proper standby. So let's do that. Tormach is 17.2 on, 15.8 off. So the Nico uses a slide-in coin cell, and it's actually a three volt. So I adjusted that, and it's at 30.4 on, 26 and a half off. The Mitu Toyo is bouncing around a little bit, but let's call it five when it's on, and about one when it's off. The Pittsburgh is 19 when it's on, and 18 when it's off. Nico is 17.6 on, about 16.4 when it's off. The Harbor Freight's about 15.8 on, 
and about 15 when it's off. So this was an interesting test and it confirmed my suspicions that the main claim to fame of the Mitu Toyo is super, super low power consumption. And you can see in this table, it is you know, by far the best in that area. The standby current is practically next to nothing. The one thing to note, um, the Q fun is significantly higher current draw than the others. And you see that I have that little parentheses in there. The QFUN's the only one that has a different battery. Every single one uses an LR44 battery, which is a 1.5 volt, and the QFUN uses a CR2032, which is a 3 volt battery. The capacities are also quite a bit different. An LR44 has about 150 milliamp capacity, whereas a CR2032 has a 240 milliamp capacity. So, to be fair and to make an offset for that, that is 1.6 times the capacity. So I'm dividing the 30.4 and 26.5 respectively by 1.6 to get 19 and 16. So it does slightly edge out the Pittsburgh being 19 and 16 versus 19 and 18. You can look at that however which way you want. You could say it's last place, but its battery is technically significantly higher capacity. So interesting. But generally speaking, every single one except for the Mi2 Toyo has about, you know, roughly speaking, the same consumption on and off, and the Mi2 Toyo is just significantly, significantly lower. So before I get to the conclusion, I just kind of wanted to throw in a couple other little pieces that didn't really fit anywhere else in the video. Um, let's talk about cases. Um, the Tormach... Pittsburgh and Harbor Freight all have kind of this standard case. Um, you've probably seen it if you've ever bought calipers. It's pretty basic, it's pretty flimsy, it's pretty cheap, and just has some foam inside. It definitely gets the job done, but it is probably the cheaper and the worst of all of the cases. Um, the Me Too Toyo actually has this relatively decent case. Um, it is the largest by far out of all of them. Comes with all sorts of manuals and things like that. The only issue that I see with the Mita Toyo is it has no actual padding anywhere. Um, you can see there's no foam. This is all just hard plastic. It obviously sits in there nice and everything, but it just kind of rattles around inside, which I think is kind of interesting for $130. Uh, the other thing to note about the Mi2 Toyo is it definitely feels more solid than the others. I'm not really sure how to describe that. Um, Weight-wise, they're all, you know, the same. I didn't weigh them because that's not really a big factor, but it definitely just kind of feels solid. It's um, one of the smaller ones. It just kind of has a nice feel to it. The Q-Fun actually has a pretty surprisingly decent case as well. It's a little bit smaller, a little bit more compact. If we open it up, it's very similar, but it has these little pads right there that kind of press down on the caliper, and the only thing you're hearing rattling is that. So it kind of, you know, holds it pretty decently in there, and also has a couple of places for different coin cells for, I guess, different models. The Nico has a case as well, so let's take a look at that. And it has a little bit of a split between the um, Q-Fun and the Mi2 Toyo. It's kind of like somewhere in between those. And I think this is probably eh, maybe my favorite case. Come on, there we go. Probably my favorite case. It actually has foam in the bottom um, that can sit there. And it also has a little foam bumpers up top. So it's kind of the most secure overall. The Mi2 Toyo is nice, but it's just a little bit bigger. So it's just kind of almost obnoxiously large. And I think that is probably in part due to the fact that it has like some shock absorbing around the outside. Maybe it's meant to be dropped a little bit more, but who knows? Um, so that gives you a little bit of idea of how all of these are packaged. 
So which one of these is the best? That's a pretty difficult question to answer. I've put together this little matrix that shows the rankings in total, and ultimately the Mitu Toyo comes out on top, mostly because the Q Fun um, ended up doing so poorly in the power test. If it had done better in the power test, it definitely would have been in the top place, but the Mitu Toyo had an average, fin average finish of about two out of you know six possible candidates, but the Q Fun was not that far behind. The Q Fun is really nice because it has this massive display, it is extremely readable, and it is responsive, and it is just silky, silky smooth. I think the um, Nico is a nice option, which came in kind of in third place. It's kind of the best of all the worlds. Um, it feels really decent. I'd say it feels most like the Me Too Toyo, although maybe a little bit smoother. Sorry, don't hate me. Um, it has a little bit more of the resistance that you might want. The Q Fun is almost sometimes like a little bit too smooth. It's like um, almost just no resistance, which you can obviously dial in. But ultimately, I don't think you could go wrong with any of these. The biggest problem is I see the Me Too Toyos are $130, whereas these two are like um, you know, $25 to $28. So is this four or five times better? You know, that's something that you're ultimately going to have to decide. The Mitu Toyo is one that you can get with certification. You can also get them in different um, IP ratings for, you know, coolant and things like that. This is going to be the one that you're going to want in the machine shop if you don't care about um, the price and you just want the ultimate best quality, you want the battery to last, etc., etc. But if I think for a home hobbyist use, I really like the Nico, and um, honestly, the Q Fun surprised me. The only big downside that it has is the current draw. The current draw is going to be a bit of an issue overall. But that is my conclusion. Um, check the links down below. I have links to all of this stuff. Obviously, they are Amazon sponsored links, so keep that in mind. Um, but, you know, hey, keeps the lights on, pays the bills. So, anyway, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Buy some calipers.